Hello everybody, my name's Hashem and thank you for joining me today and I'm going to talk a little bit about this interesting film from Lomography. It's a black and white 13 ISO low speed film that I recently tried and uh, I'm going to share some of those results with you. So thanks for joining. Let me know where you're watching from. If you've ever shot this film, I'm interested to know because it's been out for a little while. I'm a bit late to the game to try it. But I've got a little of an interesting, a little bit of an interesting story behind that. So let's um, get into it and give you a quick preview of uh, what I was able to get with this film, which is um, some of the shots you're seeing on the screen now. So uh, I'm going to share my first impressions, including the photos and just some of my general findings and uh, just some opinions and such on low speed films like this because if you know anything about me you know i'm actually quite a fan of low speed films my favorite color film is ektar 100 my favorite black and white film for the look is ilford's pan f50 and i've written a review on that done a video on that and uh yeah there's something about low speed films i quite like maybe it's the lack of grain or the smoothness or just the general character that some of these films tend to have but yeah speaking of low speed films I've tried Ilford Pan F50, obviously, I've tried uh, Ferrani P30, I've tried Rolly RPX25, those are all comparable films. And this particular one dropped in uh, 2020, so last year, mid last year. I was sent a roll by Lomography. Um, as you can see, it's actually just a little bulk loaded um, like test roll. It says black and white ISO 13 Australia on it. So. Lomography sent this to me back in February 2020 with the uh, intention for me to try it out and uh, you know give my opinions and my test shots for them to use for the release. February 2020 was a weird time. Things went into lockdowns and it was just too difficult to shoot it and uh, I never got around to shooting it. It was already going to be hard enough given that it's a low speed film. We were coming up into winter, even with the lockdowns, and it was just too hard to get out and shoot this film outside, which is where you'd really ideally want to shoot it, or under studio lights, I guess. And I just sort of struggled, and I put it in the fridge and forgot about it. Eventually, the film came out under the name Lomo Babylon Kino 13. So it's part of their Kino line of films, which uh, means cinema. And uh, there's a, a range of cinematic black and white films they do, including uh, Berlin and... Um, Potsdam. So this is the lowest speed of those three. But yeah, just checking some of the comments and I've got a few people here. Thank you for joining and, and dropping a comment. Uh, Aaron, thank you. Technol, thanks for joining again. And Aaron saying you just bought two rolls and you're excited to try it. Yeah, cool. All right, I'll share some of my images and see uh, you know what you think of them. But yeah, I put it in the fridge. 2020 happened. The film eventually just came out in mid-2020 under that name. And then uh, one day I saw it in the fridge again this year, pulled it out, and we just had lockdown after lockdown. And I thought, all right, let's just finally shoot this film. I put it in my Nikon FE and I had the Voigtlander 58mm f1.4 lens on it the whole time, given that it's a good low light lens. This is a low speed film. And uh, I slowly but surely exposed the roll. And I just sort of grabbed the camera only every now and then over the period of a few months, really, uh, because it is a little bit tricky to shoot. And I just didn't put the dedication into it for whatever reason. But eventually I reached shot 20 and hit the end of the roll. I was actually quite surprised. I didn't realize there were only 20 shots loaded into it. So then I, I hit the end and rewound it and developed it and, uh, you know, got the results here for you. So let's have a look. Let's just get into the photography. And um, I'm going to show you all the shots I got. There were roughly 20 or maybe... 18 usable shots on the roll because as you can see here uh, at the beginning of the roll there was a bit of a light leak probably from it being a bulk loaded film and uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a weird shot of our cat Winchester here and uh, the light leak sort of continued into the subsequent shots including this one and then you can see it a little bit onto the edges of this first shot which is the first usable shot of the roll and it's just a photo of an old car uh, while I was out on a photo walk with my friend Damon back during one of the uh, lockdowns where things were sort of easing and you were allowed to go for walks and meet other people outside. And yeah, it's a nice film. It's a low speed film. So you get 
uh, low grain, you get nice tonality, you get um, the ability to use a shallower depth of field where you normally wouldn't. These are some of the inherent advantages of using a low speed film. And I know what you're thinking, ISO 13, that's really low, isn't it? And yeah, sure, if you think about it this way, uh, let's say you had an ISO 200 film. With that, you would be shooting on a sunny day at about 250th of a second with F13, F16. If you wanted to shoot wide open on a lens like this, f1.4, you would need a really high shutter speed, one four thousandth of a second at least. With an ISO 13 film, the way it's going to work is that uh, using Sunny 16, you would be uh, shooting, let's say, one thousandth of a second at f1.8 or even 1.4 if you're overexposing a tiny bit, which is what this allows you to do. You can be at the ceiling of your camera's shutter speeds and shoot wide open. So that's the main reason why I think some people would wanna shoot ISO 13 films. And that just shows you that you can still use it. If it's outdoors, even if it's cloudy, you can use maybe uh, 250th of a second at f1.4 or even just um, shoot it at f4 with lower shutter speeds. So yeah, that gives you an idea. And then uh, going back to the photos, uh, I just got a closer detail shot of this car and what looks like fungal growth on the windscreen, probably bird shit that turned into mold. I have no idea. It's kind of gross, but it was an interesting texture at the time. And I just took the photo. Yeah, not much other opinion on this photo, but um, yeah, I, while I was with Damon, I took some portraits. This is one of the main strengths of being able to shoot wide open in the daytime is if you want to do some portraits and looking at this photo, it has this really nice kind of large format look almost like a, a, a larger than 35 mil format close to maybe 120 in terms of that look that you can get shooting wide open and then the 3D kind of pop from the particular uh, knocked on lens that I was using. And uh, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite shots is this series of portraits I took. And I think this is one of the strengths of the film, shooting portraits in the daytime, outdoors, you get low grain, so there's not as much distracting grain from the, the, the subject, the person you're shooting. So let me know what you think um, of this look. I've enjoyed this sort of look when shooting Pan F50 in the past, especially combining Pan F with some colored filters. What I find with Babylon is that it has a good built-in contrast and character. It's a very characterful film that you don't really need the filters and you would rob yourself of too much light, I think, adding orange filters and such. So yeah, it's a cinema film. It has that uh, character rendering, it's a bit softer than something like an Ilford or Rolly RPX. It's not as sharp, it's got more of a classic look to it. So that is the main look you'll get out of this film. And just checking some of these comments. You received two 30 meter bulk rolls of black and white Panatomic X. Wow. ISO 6 black and white. Wow, okay. Yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty tricky to work with as well. But, um, yeah, reversal films. I've never tried a black and white reversal. I'd love to someday. It's just the process of, uh, you know, developing it um, is a little bit more involved, as far as I know, than normal black and white. But it would be something that I'd probably try in the future. And uh, just saying in this next comment, watching previous videos before. Hope it's all good. Oh, nice timing. Thank you. Yeah, hope everything's pretty good lately. And uh, yeah, I did quite enjoy this film. It was interesting. This is probably uh, my favorite out of the three portraits of Damon. And um, just to show you them in, I just stepped a little bit closer each time in the full context there. And yeah, again, really nice rendering. There's not much grain. I'll zoom in here. You can kind of see the, the grain is present. It's more present than you might expect for an ISO 13, but it's still low compared to something else, especially if you look at a 400 speed film. And uh, he grabbed the camera and took a portrait of me. And you can see it's a little bit out of focus, but it still gives you an idea of with the uh, how it would look with a darker exposure. Because I think the exposure on that shot was a little bit darker. Maybe it's the shadow that was cast by my cap. Uh, but yeah, it's a lovely film. I think it's really nice. It's worth trying if you're interested in it. And I would advise you to set your meter to ISO 12 or a little bit faster if you can. I know there's not much room to work with, but with the Nikon, for example, it only had like 12 clicks, stops at about 12. And um, 
in the context of 13 ISO, even that light, little bit of overexposure I think helps. And uh, yeah, I took the camera on a different day out to the beach and tried to shoot wide open. Again, you can shoot f1.4 in the daytime. This is only a slightly overcast day, so I would have been at a higher shutter speed. And you can see it's quite soft, except where it's in focus. It has sort of a dreamy look, which is partially due to the lens being shot wide open. And also the film does have kind of a softer, more dreamy look than other films. But again, once you stop down the lens, you will get more sharpness in the image, but it's still just not as as uh, clinical as something like Ilford's Panda 50 or Rolly RPX 25. Droopy Penguin, it's winter now, lots of snow. Do you think this film will be great to use when everything is a little overexposed? Yeah, I think it would look really nice. You get some of those moody images because it's got that dreamy look. Uh, just make sure you're metering carefully when you're in the snow. I would advise using a handheld meter or uh, you know pointing your camera's built-in meter at something uh, middle tone like skin or a gray card or whatever uh, because you don't want the snow to throw off the meter and cause you to underexpose too much, which can happen. But just going back to the photos, we'll look at a few more. And uh, same day at the beach here. You can use it as a general purpose for shots like this. Uh, again, just means you won't be able to stop down too much, but it, you can see I've got enough depth of field here. I probably would have been using F4, if I'm guessing, F4 to 5.6. And then um, another cool thing about low speed films is you can have the ability to create motion blur in the daytime. Uh, this was a rainy day, so it's a little bit overcast, but that means I could be handheld, but using a slower shutter speed like think uh, a 60th or a 30th, I'm guessing, because it's a car, you know, it's moving pretty fast. I can create that motion blur and uh, still have the lens stop down a little bit. Another similar shot there. Uh, another really, really nice thing I liked about this film is how it looks for more abstracted images. If you like to shoot shapes and textures and uh, silhouettes like this one, it works really well because there's not much grain to distract from those primary elements you're trying to highlight, whether it's shapes or textures of like the raindrops on the window, whatever it is, or the silhouette. Um, whereas normally grain would be filling in these darker areas, especially, which could distract from that style of imagery. Another shot of Winchester here. It's a little bit off focus because it, it was hard to shoot this handheld in the um, indoors. That is going to be a difficulty. If you're shooting indoors, you might want a tripod. Uh, this one was one of my other favorite shots on the roll. It's just sort of like, again, going for those abstract shapes and textures and uh, works really well, I think, with the low ISO and grain. Another shot of a chair. Um, this was indoor again, but this time I used a tripod, which helped a lot. I was able to use F2.8 or whatever it was to achieve this look. And again, sort of exposing for the highlights, creating that, that uh, higher contrast look with a vertical version of the same shot. Another similar shot. And again, I, I really think these types of images are where this film can work quite well, uh, as well as portraits. If you like this kind of style, like maybe that Ralph Gibson sort of thing, uh, you would like this film, I think. And I look forward to maybe using it again in the future. So those were my shots. Those were the 20-ish shots I had on the roll. Let me know what you think. Do you like it? Do you think it's an interesting look? Would you shoot this film uh, or would you avoid it because you think it's just too slow and it's not your style of photography? I'd be keen to know what people think of these films and whether or not Lomography actually does sell a lot of it. I'm really uh, grateful that they sent me the role and uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't actually shoot it a lot sooner, but it was just the way things went. I had uh, their other products they sent me at the same time to review, such as the Lomo Instance Square which I eventually did a review on if you haven't seen it on the channel. And yeah, this one just kind of sat on the back burner. So if you want to try out this film, I definitely encourage it. Don't be too afraid of ISO 13. Again, if you have ISO 13 film in your camera, you can be out in the daytime shooting at F8 if you want, if it's sunny, but you'd just be using a 60th of a second. You can shoot F4 a little bit faster, 250th, or you can shoot wide open and, uh, even under cloudy or sunny conditions, achieve a look that you normally wouldn't be able to on 35 mil. So yeah, that's my um, my main thoughts. If you want to try it out, I put a link in the description of the video to the Lomography website, which is here. And uh, it's the English web store that I've linked in the description. 
but you can go on there and browse to find Babylon 13, which is what they eventually named the film. They sell it in different varieties of packs, single, five packs, and so on. Um, there's good options there. And if you want to see more of my shots in a little bit more detail, I know it's a little bit hard to see them on the live stream. I have also linked my blog article about the film where you can read a little bit more uh, where I've tried to write a little bit more coherently than I <laughs> speak on the live stream. And then you can zoom into the shots to see them in better detail if you want to do that. And uh, yeah, I just give a little bit more information, I think. But it, this is just a first impressions. It was a short roll. Uh, there's not really too much to speak of, but yeah, the shots are there if you want to check them out on the blog. So I've linked that and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I'm going to just read a few more comments and then probably end the stream soon. I hope everyone's doing well and that you all had a great uh, Christmas if you celebrate that and that you've got nice uh, plans for the New Year's coming up. Droopy, thanks for the tip, no worries. Really like the curtain shot. Yeah, that was one of my favorites. I used that as the thumbnail for the um, the blog article. I thought it was the best uh, landscape orientation shot that I had on that roll. Not even sure if I can adjust my camera for this ISO level. That might be the tricky thing. Uh, obviously, my shot, my roll, sorry, wasn't DX coded. Well, it, you know, the original canister was, but they put a sticker over it. But I'm not sure if the retail version is DX coded. Even if it is, yeah, a lot of cameras might not go down to ISO 13. Definitely not a lot of point and shoot cameras. But if you have a manual SLR like this one, I suppose you could go down to 25 and then add exposure compensation. See if the meter reacts to that. Or just use a handheld meter and ignore what your camera is saying. Otherwise, you have to do a bit of mental arithmetic. Aaron... Great use out of 20 frames. I agree, wide open aperture portraits and those darker vibe images are great for low ISO. Yeah, agreed. I think that's that's the strength. That's what I find I enjoy a lot when shooting Pan Air 50. It's one of the things I enjoyed about Ferrania P30, which I have done a review on on the channel. I linked that review in the blog article if you want to check that out. Uh, I've also got the review of Pan F. I haven't done anything on RPX 25, but that was a really nice film as well. I quite enjoy it. I think it's a different... Uh, approach than the usual shooting HP5 or pushing that 1600. It's a very different look. Cool, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed this one. If you are watching live or if you're watching afterwards, this is probably my last video before the new year. There's only a few days left. Today is December 27th here in Melbourne in the morning. Is it 27th? Yeah, it is. So for you, it might still be yesterday might still be Sunday. It's Monday today in Melbourne. But yeah, if you want to uh, support the channel, uh, I don't, I'm not sponsored by any anyone for this. Lomo sent me the role for free to try, but it was a beta test role and um, I will be sharing my findings with them. Maybe they'll share it on their social media channels, who knows. But yeah, uh, big thanks to Lomography for sending me this role. Uh, but if you do want to support my work here on the channel, I put a couple of links in the description of the video where you can um, check out things like my zine, which I'm selling for 25 Australian dollars plus shipping. Uh, I've also got a buy me a coffee page. I don't uh, have a Patreon or anything like that yet, but if you, caffeine is probably my main sponsor. This video is sponsored by a coffee. So if you want to buy me a coffee, a couple of bucks, you can click the link in the description. And also, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You can join the Discord server. If you want to chat more about film and nerd out about cameras and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you do manage to try this film, I'd uh, be keen to see your results with it. Every now and then I check the hashtags on Instagram, but you can always uh, put some photos in the Discord server in the channel photo dump or one of the similar channels. I'd be uh, interested to try this film again in the future. The only thing is it seems a little bit expensive here in Australia to get your hands on it. But I would be interested to try it again for some more portraits outdoor. I think that was a really cool uh, result. But yeah, those are my initial impressions. Thanks for joining today. I hope you have a great new year and I'll see you in the next Pushing Film video. All right, bye.